Welcome to Book Problems for Momentum. Again, make sure you have a pad, pencil, something to write with, and try to come up with the answer before I project it. Distinguish between mass and momentum, which is inertia and which is inertia in motion. Distinguish between mass and momentum. Mass is inertia. Momentum is inertia in motion. You can literally say, what's the mass of something? What's the inertia of something? Which has a greater mass, a heavy truck at rest or a rolling skateboard? Which has a greater mass, a heavy truck or a rolling skateboard? The truck has more, uh, <clears throat> has more uh, a mass, a greater mass. Uh, which has a greater momentum? Well, the truck is... Uh, <clears throat> not moving, so it's zero, so it's going to be the rolling skateboard. Distinguish between force and impulse. Force is force. Impulse is force times time. Distinguish between impact and impulse, which designates a force and which designate and which is force multiplied by time. Force is push or pull. Impulse equals force times time. That's the answer to three. Now, number four, distinguish between impact and impulse. Impact designates a force. Impulse is force times time. Impact is force times time. Uh, so, we now have two things we're looking at. We have momentum and we have impulse. When the force on impact of impact on an object is extended in time, does the impulse increase or does it decrease? When the force of impact on an object is extended in time, does the impulse increase or decrease? It increases. It increases. Uh, distinguish between impulse and momentum, which is force times time and which is inertia in motion. Momentum is inertia in motion, and uh, impulse is force times time. Does the impulse uh, equal momentum or change in momentum? It always equals a change in momentum. That's a very, very important uh, concept, change in momentum. Always, 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 always. Does a constant force suppose, for a constant force, suppose the duration of impact on an object is doubled? How much is the impulse increased? It doubles. And B, how much is the resulting change in momentum increased? Again, it doubles. Just remember, uh, for a force, suppose the duration of the impact is doubled. So force, what's the relationship between force and impulse? In a car crash, why is it advantageous for an occupant to extend the time during which the collision takes place? Because the force will be less. If, if the time of impact in a collision is extended by four times, how much does the force of impact change? Uh, <clears throat> if the impact, well that's the force, so it is reduced by one-fourth of the time. So what's the relationship between time and force? It's inversely proportionate. You multiply somebody something times four, you divide by four, because it's they're related. Why is it advantageous for a box to ride with a punch? Why should he avoid moving into an oncoming punch? Greater time means less force. Less time means greater force. I did a um, something on that on the lecture that made, made, made sense or should make sense to you. Visualize yourself on a skateboard. When you throw a ball, do you experience an impulse? When you throw a ball, do you experience an impulse? Do, do you experience an impulse when you catch a ball? So there's your, there's your throwing or catching a ball. And... You know, you were part of, you and the ball were a mass. And now you're sending the ball in the opposite direction that you might be going. So, uh, the answer to A would be yes. There's a little bit more to it than that, and we'll discover that a little bit later. You experience an impulse when you catch a ball of the same speed. Uh, do you experience an impulse when you catch it and then throw it out again? Uh, do you experience an impulse when you catch a ball at the same speed? Yes. You experience an impulse. Do you experience an impulse when you catch it 
and then throw it back again, yes. So they're all yes. Which impulse is greatest? Hmm, A, B, or C. Which impulse is greatest? And number 13, why is, it more, why is more impulse delivered during a collision when bouncing occurs than during one that doesn't? Um, <clears throat> D would be catching and then throwing it again because it's knocking you backwards and then when you throw it you go backwards even more so that would be like bouncing the change in momentum is greater so the impulse is greater remember it's going to be a change in impulse would be initial minus uh, a final minus initial so if they're in opposite directions it would be two a double impulse why is the Pelton wheel an improvement over paddle wheels with flat paddles? Uh, it doubles the impulse. Uh, and I didn't show the math for that, but possibly I shouldn't. It causes greater change in the fluid's momentum, so it provides more impulse. It could actually double it, but that would be a perfect situation. In terms of momentum conservation, why does a cannon recoil when fired? The cannon's momentum must be equal and opposite to that of the cannonball so that they are, you know, they've got to be, in other words, the initial, the final minus the initial has to equal, the final plus the initial must equal zero. So the, the one has to be negative other, or otherwise they won't cancel. Why does it, what, what does it mean to say momentum is conserved? The momentum before collision is the same as the momentum after the collision. So they must be uh, equal and opposite. Um, and number 17, distinguish between an elastic and inelastic collision. An elastic collision involves uh, bounces. Objects become distorted and generated, generate heat during inelastic collision. Imagine that you are hovering next to a space shuttle in an Earth orbit. Your buddy of equal mass who is moving at 4 kilometers per second with respect to the shuttle bumps into you. If he holds on to you, how fast does, how fast do you uh, both move with respect to the ship? Okay, so number 18 sounds, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more uh, completely. Let me change the timing on this. So let's talk a little bit more about number 18. Imagine that you are hovering next to the space shuttle in an Earth orbit. Your buddy of equal mass who is moving at four kilometers per hour with respect to the shuttle bumps into you. If he holds on to you, how fast do you both move with respect to the ship? Now remember, uh, let's read the other ones first. Uh, in momentum, is momentum conserved for colliding objects that are moving at angles to one another? And the balls have different masses and speeds. Rank the following from greatest to least. Momentum and the impulse needed to stop them. Okay, so let's look at the space shuttle problem again and see if we can come up with an answer. It says, how fast do you both move with respect to the ship? Right, the mass doubles so the speed is halved two kilometers per hour. You get that? So ignore the space shuttle, but your body, uh, it says imagine you are hovering next to the space shuttle. It doesn't say that you're holding on, but you're moving along with the space shuttle. Your body of equal mass who is with you uh, bumps into you. So you're going to double the mass. You're going to have the velocity. You're going to double the mass and have the velocity. Okay, number 19 says, is momentum conserved for colliding objects that are moving at angles to one another? Explain. Uh, <clears throat> yes, well, if you have two cars going at uh, right angles to one another, let's say they're both the same mass and the same velocity, it's going to create a resolution where they'll be going at uh, 45 degree angles. So, Yes, and the resulting motion follows vector rules. Um, <clears throat> so if if they're both going at one kilometer per hour and they hit at uh, uh, 90 degrees and they're both the same mass, then they would go root two uh, uh, 
as the vector magnitude. All right, here I have four four balls being uh, moving uh, along in uh, in uh, motion, and we're going to rank these balls in terms of uh, decreasing momentum and impulse. The first one is going to be 9 times 1 is 9, 8.5 times 1.2 is going to be 10.2, 12 times 0.8 is going to be 9.6, and 2 times 5 is going to be 10. So we want to rank those. So it's going to be D is the highest, DB, and then looks like CA. Let's see. The balls have different masses and speeds ranked the following from greatest to least momentum and the impulse needed to stop them. So uh, the impulse needed to stop them, so you'll have a change in momentum if you stop them. So the impulse must equal the change in momentum. So the first one is 9, the second one is 10.2, the next one, C, is going to be 9.6, and then 10. So 10, 10.2, so it's going to be D, B, C, A is going to be the answer for both A and B. Both A and B would be the same. D, B, C, A. D, B, C, A. That's correct. And then the impulse needed to stop them, it would be exactly the same. Because, remember, <coughs> impulse, equals, e impulse equals a change in momentum. So, whatever the change in momentum is, you're going from 9 meters per second to 0, 8.5 to 0, 12 to 0, 2 to 0, and you're going to have a change in momentum. So th that's going to be the same, BDCA. So it's going to be BDCA for both of them. Now let's look at problem 21. Okay, it says below are before and after pictures of a car's speed. The mass of the car doesn't change. Rank the following from greatest to least the magnitude of momentum change and the magnitude of impulse produced producing the momentum change. So let's see. In A you have 10 times the mass, so it would be 10. Let's say the car is 1. And then the next one would be 5, and then 10, and then 0. So A and C would be equal, and B would be greater than D. So it would be A equals C, and then B, D. A equals C and then BD. That would be correct. And the magnitude of the impulse producing the momentum change should be the same because the change in momentum is going to equal the impulse in, that caused that change in momentum. Okay, let's look at it again. And in order to speed up that car, you're going to have to apply a force over a certain amount of time. There you go, force, a net force for a certain amount of time. So A and C would have the same impulse uh, or the same force applied. So it would be A equals C, B, D would be the answer to that problem. Okay, so let's look at uh, the next problem. Waiting for the next problem. Okay. Jogging Jake runs along a train flat car that moves at the velocity shown. In each case, Jake's velocity is given relative to the car. Rank the following from greatest to least. The magnitude, remember it says magnitude, the magnitude of Jake's momentum relative to the car, and B, Jake's momentum, that's a vector, relative to the right. Uh, to an observer at rest on the ground. So A is just magnitude and B is the actual vector. So A is uh, <clears throat> A is 4, C is 4, so they're equal. B and D are equal, but B and D are greater. So it would be B equals D and then and then A equals C. So B equals D and A equals C. Those would be the uh, vectors. Easy. Now, <clears throat> next. Next, we want to look at the momentum. All right, let's look at the answers first to the magnitude 
and they are actually correct. It would be B is equal to D, and A is equal to C. Now, next, Jake's momentum to the right, which is the positive, left is negative, uh, to an observer at rest on the ground. So, we want to find uh, relative to the ground. So, um, A, he's moving positive 4 uh, to the right. And B is uh, 4 to the left. <clears throat> so, it would be negative 4. B would be negative 4. A would be positive 4. C would be a positive 10, and D would be a positive 12. So it would be D, C, A would be positive 4, so that would be next, and then B. So it would be B, C, A, B in that order. Because the B is going to be uh, negative 10 to the left and positive 6 to the right, the answer would be negative 4 to the left, and A would be positive 4 because it's going to the right. So you're simply adding the vectors. It's similar to mechanical equilibrium back in Chapter 2. So uh, nothing changes relative to uh, this particular material. And that would be correct. D, C, A, B. So you're going clockwise from D. And that would be absolutely correct. Next, number 23. Rick, Rick pushes crates starting at rest across the floor for three seconds with the net force as shown. For each crate, rank the following from greatest to least. Change in momentum, that would be uh, MV or... FT would be the same because it would be, they'd be equal. The final speed, the momentum in three seconds. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the first one would be for three seconds. So it would be 300. Three times 75 is 225. And three times 50 is 150. So from greatest to least, it would be uh, ABC would be the greatest momentum, the greatest impulse. So it would be ABC going from greatest to least. Uh, next. Um, the final speed. So ABC is right. The final speed. So uh, 150 divided by 10. 150 divided by 10 is 15. 75 times 3 is 225, divided by 20 would be 11.25, and 300 divided by 30 is 10, so it would be CBA, uh, would be CBA, would be the final speed. And then the momentum in 3 seconds would be the same as the change in momentum, and that would be ABC, it would be the same exact thing, it would be ABC without even looking at the problem. But let's look at the problem very quickly. Yeah, it would be ABC because 300, 225, and 150. So it would be ABC. Now, <clears throat> next, let's get the ABC part, and we can start doing the next problem. Okay, very good. It's ABC. So A and C would be the same, A, B, C, A, B, C. So the change in momentum and the momentum in three seconds would be the same, A, B, C. And the final speed would be the opposite of that, would be C, B, A. All right, now, the key equations in the chapter are shown below. Calculate the momentum of a 10-kilogram bowling ball rolling after two, two meters per second, so it would be 20 kilogram meters per second. Calculate the momentum of a 50 kilogram carton that slides 4 meters per second across an icy floor. The first one is 20 kilogram meters per second and the second one is going to be a 200 kilogram meters per second. Uh, calculate the impulse when an average force of 10 newtons 
is exerted on a cart for 2.5 seconds, that would be 25 newton seconds, and the 25 is correct, 200 kilogram meters per uh, kilogram meters per second, and the last one would be 25 newton seconds. So they would also be equal. Very good. So, um, and that's 25 newton seconds. So you can you can call impulse newton seconds. There's no problem with that, newton seconds. So, um, next. Let's start the next one quickly. Okay, calculate the impulse when an average force of 10 newtons acts on a cart for 5 seconds. That would be 10 times 5, which would be 15 newton seconds. A lunar vehicle is tested on Earth at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. When it travels as fast on the moon, is its momentum more, less, or the same? Is it more, less, or the same? You can see that the first one is 27 is correct. That's 50. That's 10 times 5 newton seconds. The momentum is the same. Its weight changes, but not its mass. Remember, momentum is based on mass. Uh, when you ride a bicycle at full speed and the bike stops suddenly, why do you have to push hard on the handlebars to keep from flying forward? Because... Uh, so that the reaction force of the handlebars on you will produce a backward acting impulse. Uh, it kind of stops you from from being launched. Uh, it happened to me once and I uh, went flying off the handlebars. Uh, can Andrew produce a net impulse on an automobile by sitting inside and pushing on the das dashboard? Can the internal forces within a soccer ball produce an impulse on the soccer ball that will change its momentum? Well, no, because uh, you're inside the object. So that's like saying uh, a soccer ball can move all by itself on its own. No, forces within are internal and provide no impulses. The forces have to be acting externally for this to work. Brian tries to jump from his canoe to the dock. He lands in the water, delighting his companions. What's your explanation for this mishap? Same momentum change for both Brian and the canoe. Since canoe moves backwards, as Brian jumps forwards, he falls short of the dock. They're kind of equal, so he's kind of falling about where the canoe was, actually. So he falls in the water as a result of that. Jason throws a ball horizontally while standing on roller skates. He rolls backwards with a momentum that matches that of the ball. Will he end up rolling backwards if he goes through the motions of throwing the ball but does not let it go? He will move to and fro with no net change. If there is no momentum change on the ball, um, he's not going to go anywhere. So, uh, only he has to actually release the ball. Like it says in the problem, in the answer, there is no obviously directed momentum change to Jason. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the next one is related to that and it says the example in the previous question can be explained in terms of momentum conservation and in terms of Newton's third law. Assuming you've answered it in terms of momentum conservation, answer it also in terms of Newton's third law or vice versa if you've already or if you've answered already in Newton's third law. So, in terms of Newton's third law, the answer would be, Jason can't exert a force on the ball unless ball exerts an equal and opposite force on him. For the system of Jason, the ball, and the roller skates, these are internal forces that add to zero and produce no net momentum. He's got to actually let the ball go. Uh in order to have that force to go in the opposite direction. So, uh, in the previous chapter, rocket propulsion was explained in terms of Newton's third law. That is, the force that propels a rocket is from the exhaust gases pushing against the rocket. The reaction to the force the rocket exerts on the exhaust gases. 
explain rocket propulsion in terms of momentum conservation. In terms of impulse and momentum, why are airbags in automobiles a good idea? Uh, <clears throat> well, number 34 is by momentum conservation, conservation of uh, momentum of rockets plus momentum of the gases is constant. So delta delta rho rocket equals rho gases. Rocket gains momentum in one direction. Gases gain equal, mom equal momentum in the opposite direction. So, and the airbags increase your stopping time. In other words, you stop more slowly in a head-on collision. Greater time of impact means less force of impact. Greater time of impact uh, means less force of impact. And here would be a haystack. Why, you know, why would a haystack be great to run into in order to stop your car? Well, it's nice and soft, and it's going to slow your car uh, slowly uh, in terms of time. So it will take a long time to slow your car. So the forces involved would be negligible. Why do you? Why do gymnasts use floor mats that are very thick? Again, if you fall on the mat, you are actually coming to a stop less automatically. It's it's uh, actually uh, it's actually more time uh, in which you're coming to a stop. The extra thick thickness extends time of momentum change and reduces forces for the same impulse. What, when jumping from a significant height. Why is it advantageous to land with your knees slightly bent? Well, again, you're, you're going to be stopping uh, over a longer period of time. Less impact force because bent knees provide longer time to change your momentum. In terms of impulse and momentum, why are nylon ropes, uh, which, which stretch uh, considerably under, under tension, favored by mountain climbers? Uh, because if you're in a harness and you fall 20 feet, whatever, the nylon rope will stop you more slowly. They'll stretch, increasing the time. So if you fall, longer time to decrease momentum means less force uh, if rope stops a fall, for rope to stop a fall. Not if, hopefully it will stop a fall. Otherwise, that would be very painful. Same thing with bungee jumping. You know, bungee jumping the rope the ropes stretch and reduce your momentum over a long period of time, reducing the forces involved. So, <clears throat> uh, for number 38, also think bungee jumping. Why uh, would it be a dangerous mistake for a bungee jumper to use a steel cable rather than an elastic cord? Yes, it would be extremely dangerous because the stop would be automatic. It would be very quick less than a split second and the forces would be very high. When catching a foul ball at a baseball game, why is it important to extend your bare hand upwards so so they can move downwards as the ball is being caught? Again, number 39, small stretch means small stopping time means greater force. Ouch. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit more than ouch. Uh, well, you put your hand up so that when the ball comes to it and it hits it, you can bring it down and uh, increase the stopping time uh, used to uh, used to uh, drain the momentum. Drain the momentum. Extended hands allows more time to to reduce the momentum of ball to zero. Less force, uh, less force of impact on hands. Why would it be a poor idea to have the back of your hand up against the outfield wall when you catch a fly ball? Um, that would really hurt because there's no, the change in momentum would be instantaneous and the force would be very high. Many years ago, automobiles were manufactured to be as rigid as possible. Today's autos are designed to crumble upon impact. Why? Uh, let's look at 41 first and it would be much less time in changing ball's momentum leading to damaged hands. Um, small time, large force. Um, 
The reason you have the crumple zones is to increase the time that the momentum is changing, thereby in decreasing the forces involved. So increased time, decreased forces. Increased time, decreased forces. Uh, then why is it difficult for firefighters to hold a hose that ejects large amounts of water at high speed because the, uh, the forces are so great the other way that the opposite momentum in order to keep it stable if you have high momentum one way they're going to increase a large momentum the other way and that would take a large force in order to, to secure that in terms of the conservation of momentum the hose tends to recoil from the ejected water it's an easy way of putting it uh, you can't throw a raw egg against a wall without breaking the shell but you can throw it at the same speed into a sagging sheet without breaking it explain again you're increasing the time frame so you're increasing the time in which the egg is coming to a stop thereby decreasing the force increase time decrease force why can Mohammed exert a greater punching force with his bare fist that he can while wearing a boxing glove. Number 44, again, the time it takes to stop is extended, more time, less force, and a less likely broken egg. Uh, <clears throat> because Mohammed's uh, uh, hand uh, is going to, uh, is going to uh, decrease the stopping time. So decrease stopping time, increase force. Why do 6-ounce boxing gloves hit harder than 16-ounce boxing gloves for the same reason? Uh, less impact time with a fist, more impact force. Same idea. Um, the greater the ounce glove, uh, uh, the, more the more stopping time you're going to have because the 16-ounce glove means that it's padded. Why do 6-ounce gloves hit harder than 16-ounce gloves? Again, because the 16 ounce gloves would have more padding, greater stopping time, less force. Okay, uh, suppose you roll a, a bowling ball into a pillow and the ball stops. Now suppose you roll it against a spring and it bounces back with an equal and opposite momentum. Uh, which object exerts a greater impulse, the pillow or the spring? And if the time it takes the pillow to stop the ball, okay, the spring, again the spring, because it's going to double the momentum, because you're bouncing, okay. Uh, and then if the time it takes the pillow to stop the ball is the same as the time of contact of the ball with the spring, how do you average forces exerted on the ball compare? Uh, because the, if you, if you, if you have the spring, it's going to double the uh, it's going to double the impulse. Twice the impulse in the same amount of time uh, means twice the average force. If you topple from your treehouse, you'll continually gain momentum as you fall to the ground below. Doesn't this violate the law of conservation of momentum? Defend your answer. Well, think about the relationship between you who are falling and the earth. If the system is you and earth, then your momentum towards the earth is equal and opposite to the earth's momentum toward you. There's no net change in momentum because while you're falling down, earth is falling much less noticeably up. If a fully cooked, a fully loaded shopping cart uh, and an empty one traveling at the same speed have a head-on collision, which cart will experience the greater force of impact? The greater impulse, the greater change in momentum, the greater acceleration. Mm, very serious problem. The momentum of force, impulse, and change in momentum is the same for each. The empty cart undergoes the greater acceleration due to its less mass. Very, very interesting. Did you get that? I hope so. A bug and the windshield of a fast-moving car collide. 
indicate whether each of the following statements is true or false. The forces of impact on the bug and on the car are the same size. That's true. Uh, Newton's law, uh, Newton's law, third law of motion, equal and opposite uh, forces. Newton's third law. The impulse on the bug and on the car are the same size. Yes, the impulses are the same. However, uh, there are differences in that. But the impulses on the bug and on the car are the same. That should be true. The changes in speed of the bug and of the car are the same. Well, that would be quite false because um, the bug is going to be moving, it's going to be stopping, but it's, uh, it's, the car is going to be moving faster and then the bug will be moving, so that would be false. The changes in momentum of the bug and of the car are the same size. Well, if the impulses are the same, then the change in momentum is the same. Uh, so that would be true as well. So it would be true, true, false, true. False, the changes in speed are very different due to the different masses and the resulting accelerations. So that would be false, and D should be the same as B. Uh, if the impulses, the impulses and the change of momentum should be uh, the same. So that will be true. Let's see what happens. Very exciting waiting. Very exciting. Here we go. It will be true. The impulses are of the same size. What difference in recoil would you expect in firing a solid ball versus firing a hollow ball from the same cannon? Explain. Well, <clears throat> the solid can the solid cannonball is going to have a greater mass, so to have a greater momentum. And that's the answer. There is more kick from the solid ball because of a greater change in momentum for the solid ball. A group of playful astronauts, each with a bag of balls, form a circle as they free fall in space. Describe what happens when they begin tossing balls simultaneously to one another. The astronauts would recoil and the circle would widen. The circle would widen. A proton from an accelerator strikes an atom. An electron is observed flying forward in the same direction the proton was moving and at a speed much greater than the speed of the proton. What conclusion can you draw about the relative mass of a proton and an electron? Well, we know that the proton is much larger than the electron, and this observable phenomena would be consistent with that. So the proton, the electron would be much lighter, would be much less mass than the proton, and that would be consistent with what we see here. The electron has much less mass than the proton. Using units show that kilogram meters per second is equivalent to Newton seconds. Well, if you multiply kilogram meters per second squared by seconds, a second in the denominator will cancel and you get Newton, per, Newton seconds equals to kilogram meters per second. And that's, uh, that would be true. And that is actually dimensional analysis. A 1,000 kilogram car moving 20 meters per second slams into a building and comes to a halt. Which of the following questions can be answered using the given information, and which one cannot be answered? Explain. What impulse acts on the car, and what force of impact, and what is the force of impact on the car? Well, it would be 20,000 uh, would, uh, would be the impulse, and we don't know, we, we can't come up with the force because we don't know what the stopping time will be. We could estimate it to be 0 .001 seconds possibly, but we don't know it. Without knowledge of the impact time, we cannot solve for the force of impact. So, you have to know 
something. You have to know the time because there's just too many things, uh, too many variables here. And 56, a car with a mass of 1,000 kilograms moves at 20 meters per second. What braking force is needed to bring the car to a halt? Well, the, the impulse would be uh, 20,000 uh, and uh, that would equal FT. So if you divide by 10, it would be 2,000. Newtons would be the force, the braking force that you would need uh, to bring the car to a halt in 10 seconds. So 2,000 Newtons. Right. Next, 57. A 2 kilogram blob of putty moving 3 meters per second slams into a 2 kilogram blob of putty at rest. Calculate the speed of the two stuck together blobs of putty immediately after colliding. Well, the first, the total momentum in the beginning would be 2 times 3 is 6, and then, um, then it would be 6 equals the total mass, which would be 4. So four divided by, 6 divided by 4 would be 1.5, and the speed of the two blobs, the calculate the speed of the two blobs if the one at rest was 4 kilograms. And you would simply, um, you would simply uh, do, the, do the math, and it would come out to be, would be uh, 2 plus 4 in the denominator. The 6 kilogram meters per second would be the same, so it would be 1. A 1 kilogram dart moving horizontally at 10 meters per second strikes and sticks to a wood block of mass 9 kilograms which slides across a friction-free level surface. What is the speed of the block and the dart after the collision? So we have uh, M1 V1 plus M2 V2 and then the M1 prime and M2 V prime. Uh, that could be factored out. The wood is initially zero and both objects move together after the collision. So M prime would be the same, obviously, for both mass 1 and mass 2 because they're joined, uh, as is in the second line where you have V prime times the sum of the masses. So taking that equation and, and uh, plugging in or reducing them further, uh, the M2 V2 would cancel to zero because the wood isn't moving initially. So it would be M1 V1 equals M1 plus M2 quantity and then times the V prime. And then it would be uh, solving for V prime uh, equals the product of M1 and V1 divided by the sum of M1 and M2. And plugging in you get one meter per second for the V prime. So the answer to the question, what is the speed of the block and the dart after collision, is one meter per second. One meter per second. Okay, we're almost finished. Let me let that play out and you can consider uh, what you just did. Assume an eight kilogram bowling ball moving at two meters per second bounces off a spring at the same speed that it had before bouncing. What is the momentum of recall? In other words, what is it going away as? What is it going away as? And uh, let's do the next one after this one. Okay, it would be eight times two, that's what it's going away as, eight times two, or eight times negative two, 16 kilogram meter per second. What is the change in momentum? What is the change in momentum? Well, if it went 16, negative 16 in, negative uh, positive 16 out, the change would be 32 kilograms, uh, kilogram meters per second. And if the interaction with the spring occurs in 0.5 seconds, it would be would calculate the average force the spring exerts, and that would be 32 divided by 0.5 would be 64. 64. Brakes are applied in bringing a 1,200 kilogram car moving at 25 meters per second to rest in 20 seconds. Show that the amount of braking force is 1,500 newtons. 
show that the amount of breaking force is 1,500 newtons. So it's going to be 1,200 uh, times 25 divided by 20. And the answer is going to be 1,500 newtons. Uh, 1,200 times 25 divided by 20, and that's going to equal 1,500 newtons. If you put that in your cal calculator, that's exactly what happens. So go over that while we're waiting for the next one. I'm going to let this run. I'm not going to change the timings. So make sure that you can do all of these individually. 61, a 20 kilogram mass moving at a speed of 3 meters per second is stopped by a constant force of 15 newtons. Show that the stopping time required is 4 seconds. So it'll be 20 times 3 is 60 and then divided through by 15 and that equals 4 seconds. So that's the equation, uh, which reduces to uh, Ft equals mv, and then solving through for t, I get t equals mv over f, and then plugging in, I get 4 seconds. 20 times 3 divided by 15 is 4 seconds. <clears throat> 62. Coming up, I haven't left the air. I'm still here. A one kilogram ostrich egg is thrown at two meters per second at a bed sheet and is brought to rest in 0.2 seconds. Show that the average amount of force on the egg is 10 newtons. Show that the average force on the egg is 10 newtons. Well, it's going to be one times two divided by 0.2, and that is 10. So why don't you work that on your calculator. Uh, I'll come back when it's at number 63. Have fun. So that's 10 newtons and 63. A railroad diesel engine weighs four times as much as a freight car. If the diesel engine coasts at five kilometers per hour into a freight car that is at rest, how fast do the two coast after they couple? Very interesting problem. Four times the weight means four times the mass, you can cancel the G's out. Four times the weight means four times the mass. Excellent. So now what? See if you can come up with the answer. A railway, a railroad diesel, all right, so it's gonna be four times five, four, four M, four times the mass, plus zero, and then four M plus M is five M, uh, so it would be, what, the M's cancel, one of the M's cancels, so what happens? So I get 4 kilograms, 4, ki four kilograms, the, uh, the M's cancel, and I get 4 kilometers per hour, 4 kilometers per hour. If you can do this problem, you're pretty good. If you can do this problem, you're pretty good. So, uh, how fast do the two coasts after they couple? Four times the weight equals four times the mass. Pretend the mass of the engine is four kilograms. The freight car is one kilogram. What I'm trying to do is I'm extending this problem a little bit because you might have had a hard time doing it the way that I did it initially. So let's look and see what we're getting. The, the, the uh, momentum of the engine plus the momentum of the car equals the momentum of the engine plus the car. So the MVI of the engine plus the MVI of the car is the MVF, the total mass, all right, so there you have it. 
okay, 4 uh, times 5 plus 1 times 0, and then 5 kilograms times VF, and let's see what happens. So what I'm just simply doing is putting in some, it's certainly going to be more than 4 kilograms, but I'm just putting in just make-believe numbers. So then it would be uh, 20 divided by 5 is 4 kilograms per hour. Uh, you put in any ratio of 4 to 1, uh, you know, you're going to get the same answer. A comic strip superhero meets an asteroid in outer space that hurls it at 100 meters per second. The asteroid is a thousand times more massive than the superhero is. In the strip, the superhero is seen at rest after the throw. Taking physics into account, what would be his recoil speed? What is this in miles per hour? So when you see this, you'll be absolutely positively amazed because, uh, you know, you see Superman with the jet and everything else and it just doesn't make any sense in terms of uh, momentum and conservation of momentum. Well, you know that the initial momentum yields the final momentum. That's true. So I'm going to let this play out and see if you can figure things out. So the so it's zero equals. Uh, the mass of, of the superhero times the velocity of the superhero and the mass of the kilogram, the mass of the uh, asteroid times the speed of it equals zero. So then we see that, what's that? 10 million, yeah, 10 million kilograms meters per second divided by 100 and that's going to be the velocity of the superhero uh, or negative 100,000 meters per second and then calculating uh, you get an amazing value uh, for the answer so you know you get 224 thousand miles per hour. Uh, pretty amazing. Okay, here we have a giant fish and a little fish. I think this actually might be the last problem. And we're going to drag this out a little bit. A five kilogram fish swimming one meter per second swallows an absent-minded one kilogram fish at rest. What is the speed of the large fish immediately after lunch? what would its speed be if the small fish were swimming towards it at four meters per second. So case one would be the first question and that would be five times one is five plus zero equals six V. So it would be five sixth V. But let me let me let that play out and see what you can come up with yourself. So uh, the next one is going to be what would its speed be if the small fish were swimming towards it at 4 meters per second. It's a little different. Instead of being at rest, and don't forget the sign of the small fish, the speed of the small fish is equally as important. It would be negative 4. So that's 5 plus negative 4 would be 1 so it would be 5 plus negative 4 equals VF6. Uh, so it would be 1 kilogram meters per second on the left and 6, so it would be 1 sixth would be the answer. 1 sixth. And the kilograms cancel and you're left with 1 sixth and that completes our problems. So I hope you enjoyed them. Have a good day. 
good luck, see you tomorrow, and goodbye.